All right, everybody, this is Ross. Um, we're going to be propagating my Gumi, my Gumi bush today. And this has become one of my absolute favorite fruits here that I grow in the Philadelphia area. This is the bush right here that we're going to be propagating. We're going to be putting on um, some air layers today because I've gone through um, a little bit of research, a little bit of uh, also experience of my own. And we try to propagate this particular bush here, this particular variety um, from cutting. And I took some cuttings in the fall. I took some cuttings in the winter time. And I just literally stuck them in the ground. I scored the bottom, um, exposed the hardwood, uh, exposed that cambium, and then just stuck them in the ground. And they leafed out in the, in the spring. Um, they also flowered in the spring, um, which probably wasn't very helpful. But uh, yeah, they did end up, they end up putting out some foliage, but they didn't end up rooting. There was no roots to speak of. Um, and then therefore, once it got a bit warm out here, the tops started to die and shrivel up. And therefore, it wasn't a success. Um, I do believe, uh, strongly believe, that you can root them from cutting. Because um, if we're going to air layer them, we can definitely air layer them. I've, I've done the research. I have a friend that, that air layers them with good success, um, actually great success. But he uses rooting hormone. Um, so that's the key here, I think, is that if I'm going to sell some cuttings to you guys probably in the fall because everybody has been asking me about this particular variety, where to get it, if I'm going to be selling plants or cuttings. And I have to say... Um, I've just been having trouble propagating it. So I don't really, at least in good conscience, can say that, you know, let me sell you guys some cuttings, they're gonna root. You know, it's not like a fig, as an example. Um, so if you're willing to take that risk and you're willing to use rooting hormone and you've got them in the right environment, I think that's also probably a bit key here. You know, starting them indoors, maybe you have some sort of misting system in a greenhouse somewhere, and you've also got this rooting hormone. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try it. I'd all, I would also consider trying some grafting as they are related to the autumn olive and you might have some autumn olive plants because they are so invasive. You might be able to, uh, to graft them onto the autumn olive. The issue I see with that, as people have suggested that actual answer to me, is that the autumn olive, I believe, likes to sucker quite a bit. And also the Gumi likes to really send out a lot of branches everywhere as well. Um, so you may end up fighting the autumn olive for dominance. So you may have just a lot of suckering that comes up that you don't want from the autumn olive. Um, additionally, because it is so related to the autumn olive, I imagine it probably propagates pretty well from seed. However, I haven't seen any seeds come up here uh, there's plenty of seeds on the ground that I've been scattering, just spitting out of my mouth um, onto the ground everywhere, and I have really have not seen any seedlings come up. Um, so I think it's probably difficult to get them to propagate from seed. Not that I would even want to, um, because this particular variety of gumi is above and beyond the others in terms of the fruit qual in terms of the fruit size, I should say. It's about four times larger than other Gumi varieties that are available um, that you can find. So uh, I want to propagate this one. I want to clone this one exact. I don't want to have any genetic variance there. I want to make sure that I keep this and am uh, and propagating more of these particular plants. I do want to put maybe um, at least one, but maybe two more of this particular plant in the yard. My eventual plans in the fall is to actually remove uh, one of the gooseberries, probably the currants, uh, the red and the black currants. Um, we may even remove our, our Bing type cherry trees. Um, so we're gonna be removing things and putting things in and it would be a great time if I could get this air layer on now, um, now that it's early July and uh, the fruit is now harvested. There's no more fruit on this. It's also resuming growth. Um, so that means 
a, a good thing in my mind is that metabolically the tree is active. And if the tree wasn't really actively growing and there wasn't enough time left in your season, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't try it. Um, so that's what we're going to do is that we're, we talked about sort of when, when to put an air layer on, um, what different methods of propagation. Let me just quickly, briefly describe the air layering process because I'm just going to do it. I'm not even going to bring you guys in real close here. If you've seen any of the videos we've done on air layering our figs, it's the same exact method, um, except we're using the rooting hormone. Um, the other question, I guess, before I get into the method here, is what branches should I air layer? Should I air layer the new wood that's a lot thinner? Should I air layer the older wood? I imagine the older the wood that it gets, the more difficult it is to root. So I'm gonna stick with mostly the new growth. And then if I'm not, um, I'm gonna also try one on last year's growth as well. So the wood that would be two years old at the end of this season. Um, but the method's quite simple here is that we've got ourselves a sandwich plastic bag here that zip locks at the top and you fill this all up with soil you can use compost pre-moistened uh, you want to pre-moisten the soil this is 50% compost 50% pine bark fines you can also use cocoa core peat moss um, those are good air layering mediums you need something that's well moist well moistened because you want to have this stuff um, moist for a long enough time so that when this thing roots out, uh, the soil's still moist. That's the key. Um, you may even want to come in here every so often and maybe try to get some water into these, depending on how long it takes. Um, but this is a good method here, the sandwich bag method, is that I'm going to make a cut with my knife. And we're going to come through the middle here of the sandwich bag. And we're gonna cut this sort of like hot dog style, right? Those of you guys who know what hot dog style is from school. Basically cutting this guy down the middle, as you can see, in the middle there will go the branch, okay? So you basically wrap this, if this was, the branch was my finger, we wrap this around the branch. And uh, we have to girdle the tree first. So girdling is really important. You can't, you can't skip this step here. Is that we have to remove the hardwood. We have to move the, remove the bark, I'm sorry. Uh, we also have to expose the cambium. Actually, remove the cambium, excuse me. Um, we're going to make probably a nice little ring around the tree. Maybe about five millimeters in diameter all the way around the branch that we're going to air layer. And we have to remove that cambium. We have to expose that hardwood. If we do that right, we will succeed. I'm going to go all the way around one of the buds here. because usually roots form at the buds. Just performing my girdle here, guys, bear with me. We wanna remove all that cambium because if we have cambium here, that's still here, it's gonna interrupt this process. We really want to make sure we're getting this cambium off. That's really a key here, guys, with air layering. I know you can't see this, and I apologize. I just don't have a whole lot of time here. So, we got our girdle, and then the next step here is to take our rooting hormone and uh, read the directions on how to use this thing. I definitely, the Clonex here that I have, you definitely don't want to touch this stuff. Uh, let's see here. Dip the cutting 
in the gel to the desired depth. Insert cutting into rooting medium. Okay, so basically we're just going to apply this. I'm going to give it a little bit of a shake. I guess it's a gel. There's no real reason to shake this stuff. You don't want to get this stuff on your hands, I've, I've read. So be careful. Um, you don't want to swallow this stuff. Just got some on the outside of the bottle. Kind of looks like jelly. Oddly enough. You should probably wear gloves. Did get some there on my skin, so I'm gonna have to wash my hands as soon as I get get done this here. All right, I'm gonna dip my knife in here, and I'm just gonna rub this all along our girdle, and that is it here, guys. Okay. Then I'm going to take my sandwich bag, and I also have something here to tie it. You need something here to tie this. And I'm going to put this sandwich bag around, around the girdle. We're going to tighten this, and then I'm going to come in here with my tie. You guys can use twine. I'm using a rubber tree tube, plastic tree tube, holds up real well. Okay, this is on here nice and snug. It's not sliding anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Last step, we need this aluminum foil. Reason for that, we don't want to let this this soil in here dry out. We want to keep all the moisture in the soil that we can. And that is it. So what I'm going to do here guys is that this is going to take some time. It's going to take a couple months. You can take the tin foil off and you can see if you got roots showing. And I would expect this to take two or three months minimum. Um, so if, you know, today is early July, fast forward three months, puts us in October. I'm probably not gonna do an update video on this. What I will do is if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, I will post the results there on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and you guys can see if this succeeded or not. But I have no doubt that it, it will succeed. There's got to be a way to propagate these things. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys soon, all right? If you enjoyed this one, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you guys for tomorrow's video, all right? Take care.